Holiday in the South of France. La lavande, une allée avec des platanes, des petites ruelles typiquement provençales, commémoratifs pour les poilus de la Grande Guerre, et bien sûr, des croissants et un vissé chez le boulanger. And, in our case, la maison de mamie et papi, also known as my parents-in-law. And somewhere in the house they have the perfect office where you can do some serious vlogging. So, in this serious vlogging cave, I would almost say, I think it's about time to tell you why we actually want to go sailing. The answer is simple, we got the travel bug. And uh, Steph was born, um, but the travel bug never left after our first trip. Um, and the first trip is what we, I actually want to tell you about, because it was amazing and I want to share it with you so you understand why our passion for travel comes from. Question is, how did we get the travel bag? Well, before we can answer that question, I think it's important to, uh, to note that we at a certain point of time found out there is a, tr a difference between traveling and being on a holiday. Uh, we were in Malaysia and we climbed Mount Kinabalu, which was an amazing experience. And on our way back, we met this couple, which was really relaxed. Clearly, we were rushing because we, read we had to take a bus at a certain point of time. But they were just walking down, not in a hurry at all. And when we got home, it kind of made us wonder, like, how would it be to travel instead of be on a holiday? So clearly started saving a lot of money, made a sort of a plan and then decided to go. And with that, I mean, we decided to go to Beijing by train overland. When the 5th of July 2003 came, um, we uh, took off. We got into the train in uh, Amsterdam and from there went to Henglo, where my mother that time lived. Um, and uh, after a farewell, we took the Deutsche Bundesbahn and uh, went uh, all the way to Poland, uh, changed trains clearly, uh, went to White Russia uh, and ended up in Moscow. Um, in Russia, we visited some well-known sites, one of them being the Red Square. Uh, we explored some more of the city. They have a lot of uh, statues and stuff, which I think is quite amazing. But I'm very happy that we also saw some of the Russian day-to-day -day lives. Uh, life. Um, as said, we took the uh, Trans-Mongolian Express to uh, Beijing. So uh, saw a lot of railroad. Um, and what I like most about it, two things. You see the ordinary life uh, in the places you pass by and you see the hustle and bustle around the train, which I think is really amazing. First stop. Uh, Mongolia. Uh, we got out as we rented it a gur for uh, two or three days and explored basically the, the nothingness over there. It's a nomadic country, there are no fences, so animals come up to your, uh, to your premises and, and I thought it was, it was really, really amazing. So after uh, being in Mongolia, we uh, got on the train again for the last stretch all the way to Beijing. So we got to Beijing city and the fun part was that we actually started with a sort of a question and we were wondering where does the European person change into a more Asian person uh, and we actually found out that there is not such a place where it actually swaps um, and from there we didn't have a real plan we were ran out of questions so we just decided to go traveling as we didn't know what it was we just went out and started visiting sites. Uh, we went to the Forbidden City. We looked at the part of the Chinese wall, not the whole thing. Uh, took another train to uh, see the Terracotta Warriors. Took another train to go to Chengdu to see the pandas. Um, and we actually did a horse track in Songpang. And this made us tick really much. We, were, we loved the scenery. We loved being there, being back in nature. Uh, prepping your own food, uh, catching your own fish, big fish, and um, yeah, being a bit more out of the uh, out of the out of the, the busyness. So we decided to go to Tibet. 
So in Tibet, we um, faced a whole different world. I still get goosebumps if I think about it. It was really, really amazing. Uh, we first went to the Potra office clearly and after a while we kind of noticed that uh, traveling around by walking and taxi is a bit restricted um, but we found that you could actually buy a bike and just go biking and Dutch as we are this is what we did um, we biked around for quite a bit we went to Gendon monastery um, and really uh, yeah, saw some amazing stuff including all the people that you then meet on the way um, but we found we were not fit enough to actually travel all the way to Kathmandu. We actually did intend to do that, but we were not able to. And I think it might have been something with the height. Um, so we decided that um, a land cruiser going overland over the Friendship Highway all the way to Kathmandu was the best thing to do. So this is what we did. Clearly not without stopping at Mount Everest Base Camp on the Tibet side, which was an experience all by itself. It's so nice to to actually see that thing. We were very lucky because it was not clouded. Um, yeah, really amazing. Um, once we got to Nepal in Kathmandu, we kind of ran into a bit of a problem uh, because there wasn't a really a civil war, but it wasn't far off. It was quite messy at the time. So we um, uh, decided to, to travel onwards actually straight instead of doing another trekking there. Uh, and flew to Delhi, uh, which is, for those who know it, quite a bit different. So, for instance, all the tuk-tuks, the noise, the people, the smells, everything. Even if you look at the wiring, how they do their wiring, it's like, how how does it actually work, you know? Uh, cows on the streets, people, like, sh noise all around. And, and the fun part was, we were there, we went to the Taj Mahal, nobody, really funny. But uh, in the streets and in general, it was really busy. Uh, we liked it a lot because it was very different from ourselves. So it, it kind of confronted us with, with how we see the world, uh, but it was really intense. And we've been traveling up to that point. We've been seeing sites, we've been doing things, and we kind of realized that actually traveling is not the same as a holiday. So we thought we, we needed a holiday and we actually took the train uh, went all the way to Goa uh, to uh, to get some uh, get some energy and take a break from traveling. Uh, Goa, we went to uh, Palolem, uh, where we stayed at the Cozy Nook, uh, beautiful place with these bamboo houses on the beach and uh, pigs running around and uh, sunsets and yeah, just just an amazing place. Uh, when we were all energized again in uh, Palolem, uh, we decided to move on to uh, Trivan de Ramdrum de Ramdrum, which is a city in the south, but it's unpronounceable by me. Um, and there we actually used a lot of the material we shot along the way to create our first travel blog for the people that stayed behind. Um, after that was online and a lot of work, uh, we uh, decided to fly to Sri Lanka um, where we met in Colombo a bit of a mixture between the Indian and the European culture, which made it a bit more relaxed. Uh, we really, really liked Sri Lanka. Uh, it was very easy uh, to travel by train. Uh, first went from Colombo to Hikadua, where we uh, tried to do some surfing. Uh, then we took a tuk-tuk, uh, went all the way to Gaul, uh, and in Gaul and surroundings um, there was a lot of walking possible. So um, took the train further down south, uh, went to visit uh, the place where they have this tooth, um, went to the place where they have elephants, went to Colombo again, and then came basically the highlight I wouldn't call it the highlight per se, but a highlight that we vividly remember, and it was the Maldives. So before we departed, we we were skilled divers. Um, so we were on a diving safari, a boat full of Italian people. So great food and a lot of Nutella. And the only thing we did all day was diving, about four or five day, dives a day. Uh, and besides that, just sit on deck, mesmerize the beauty of the world around us. 
and uh, it really uh, made a, a huge impression. Uh, I think it was one of the most vivid memories that at least I have. Um, but all good things come to an end. So we basically had to go back after nine days and decided to go to Singapore. Uh, I think we kind of knew that the end of our trip in Asia was coming. So we did some more uh, well-known sites. Uh, in Singapore, clearly went to Raffles where we drank the cocktail, the cocktail, and uh, decided to do one more dive trip because it was so amazing. So flew to Thailand where we uh, were on a diving safari again. It wasn't as good, by the way, Sasha got air problems. So we had to abort early and decided that Asia was, was, was okay for us. So we moved to Paris, Charles de Gaulle. And uh, where we actually hit winter, so we went from plus 30 ish to I don't know what it was, but it was rather cold. Um, first went to the Eiffel Tower, uh, saw the sights from up there, and then went to uh, her parents in law to celebrate Christmas. Uh, her parents in law actually I had a camper van back at the time, we took it to go to my mother in uh, Hangelo. Uh, drove it all the way there and from there said okay let's go skiing so we actually put the the snowboard and the skis on on the on the roof and we drove to uh to st anton uh, am alberg in eisenreich uh, which uh, which we had a huge uh ski uh, and uh, an amazing time uh, really really nice uh, the camper van actually was a bit cold uh, being in the snow, uh, but uh, being together uh, made everything good. Oh. Right, um, can't go skiing all the time because these passes are quite expensive. So we decided to go driving again and we drove to Italy as we love the food. Uh, first went to the northern part of Italy. Uh, we went to the place where Romeo and Juliet met up and died or something. I don't know, but at least it was romantic. Um, drove on to Venice where we saw the uh, the usual sites and uh, in the end ended up in Florence and uh, finally Rome where we kind of found out that the van was leaking oil heavily uh, a bit like the resources we had to do this travel so we decided it was about time to go back home uh, and when we delivered the van and I clearly had to wash it it meant for us the end of our first trip and going back to Amsterdam, get our life back on, uh, on track, being fortunate and blessed that uh, we uh, had Steph, our uh, beautiful and healthy son. Um, we kind of realized that um, the travel bug was clearly there and we had to do something with it. There were a couple of lessons from our first trip that we shouldn't repeat. One being, if you go from hostel to hostel, you never have a bit of sort of a home. Uh, living from a backpack uh, is not all that ideal. A backpack in itself is stupid. Take a trolley, really. Um, but also having to look for your food all the time, uh, having a lot of people around you um, and always moving from side to side, not having the time to relax and stay for a while. Uh, wasn't ideal for us. So we want to do the trip again, same thing, but different. And the difference is, is that we feel if we go by sailboat, it will be inside out. We would be on the water instead of on the land. We would be uh, without a lot of people um, and basically on our own for a large part when you do sailing. Um, you would have a home, Mish, it's small home, but still. Uh, where you can do the cooking and you can feel at home um, and you're really free. Uh, you can park your boat wherever you want uh, at, at anchor. Um, so we came up with this idea about 12 years ago and the first and biggest problem was that none of us actually is able to sail, were able to sail. So that's what we did. We said, how hard can it be to learn how to sail? And thus we decided to learn how to sail. But fortunately, I'm not going to show that right now because it will take too much of your time. 
and it will be a separate video and if you want to see it i would say hit that subscribe button give it a like and ring the bell i think that's what all these youtubers say it doesn't matter if you have a boat or a house there's always something to pay